Next up in the super, super simple pre-made settings, we have what's known as a snap tight setting. So that's what this little dude is here. And it is also for setting faceted stones. Um, same as the pre-made basket ones. It's just these are even simpler again. Um, and these can be either soldered onto jewellery or you can even just run a bit of you know, wire or thread through them. So for anybody who does beading or textile based work, um, you can run a bit of thread or textile through the bottom of that setting, pop the stone, snap the stone in on top and it will keep it all together nice and um, nice and secure. But what we're going to do is we're going to solder that little setting onto this ring band that I've made. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do that. The way snap tight settings work is they are very hard and springy so when you pop them down onto a stone those little prongs snap around the stone and hold it in place. And the reason it's able to do that and keep it nice and secure is because like I say the metal that it's made out of, the silver, has been very work hardened so it's very springy and tough even though it looks small and delicate. But because we're going to solder it onto the ring band, if you remember from when we were doing soldering if you heat metal up, it anneals it, which means it makes it very soft. So if this becomes annealed and becomes very soft, it's no longer going to be springy. So it's no longer going to be able to hold on to the stone as well as it could do um, at the moment. So this is one of the rare occasions where I'm going to use some easy solder or extra easy if you had it. So I've just fluxed the top of my ring, the back of my setting, and I've popped a bit of easy solder on top of that ring band. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this until the solder runs and then I'm going to flip it over and put it on top of this and heat it again till it runs again. So the idea is I'm going to get as much of this up to temperature, get the solder to run without heating that setting at all because I want to try and keep it as springy as possible. So I'm going to light my torch, heat the ring band, so you can see that I've fluxed it, my bit of solder sat on the top and I'm just going to heat it until that solder runs. Solders run, so I'm going to flip this around in my third hand tweezers so that solder is now at the bottom of the ring band. And I'm going to pick this up and place it on top of my setting where I want the setting to go, and then I'm ready to heat again. But this time, again, I'm just going to heat the ring band, I'm angling my torch so that I am not heating my setting at all. I'm going to keep doing this till I see the solder run and remelt. And there it goes little snap type setting all soldered on so I've literally done nothing to it apart from solder it on and pop it in the pickle so it hasn't even been sanded or polished or anything and it's already looking lovely um, and it's soldered on lovely and neat as well so although we kept the heat off for as much as possible this still would have got some heat the little setting so it still would have been annealed it'll be softer and not as springy as it otherwise would be but I'm going to show you a little tip of how you can harden it off anyway 
Um, but for just now, I just want to show you how to set it. So I'm going to tip this camera so you can see. There we go. So there's my little faceted stone. I'm going to turn it upside down so the point is sticking upwards. And then you take the setting, hover it above, and then you just push down and it should go snap. And that's the stone set. Super, super simple. So as I say, it's not as springy as it would otherwise be, but it's still pretty springy. I heard it go snap, which is what it's meant to do. So that bolt sounds great, but I could still harden this off a bit more to make it even springier again. So one of the things I could have done before I put the stone in, if I had one, which I do, but I never use it, um, I could have popped this into a barrel polisher. And that means it gets tumbled around with some steel shot, which hits off of this and just hardens things up a little bit, makes things nice and shiny, all the rest of it. But you can do it manually, which is a lot cheaper, especially like I say, if you haven't got a barrel polisher or if you don't want one. Um, so all you need to do is take something like a burnisher or your pusher, or as I've said previously, you could use the back of a teaspoon and you're just carefully going to rub that on the prongs of your ring. And what that will do is it will make them shiny, but it's also going to harden them off. And it's also just going to make them sit a bit tighter if you rub it over the stone, same way we've done with every other setting. And that's it, just going to tighten it. And again, same with every other stone we've set. When you are rubbing and pushing over, make sure you support the opposite side with your finger or your thumb. Because otherwise, if you just shove, the stone might come flying out or you might just completely squash the entire setting. So always make sure the point opposite where you're pushing and rubbing is supported with your fingers. And like I say, that's just going to smooth it, it's going to harden it, it's going to make it nice and hard and springy. But it's also going to shine it up a bit, which can look like scratches if the ring had a matte finish. So I'm going to take some wire wool and I'm just going to scrub the ring band. And that's going to very quickly bring up a nice shine. Just be careful, you don't want to get loads of wire wool caught around the prongs because then you've got to sit and pick it out again. Super shiny. Super shiny, super simple, give it a go. There's one little snap tight setting. So as you can see, it's very neat, considering I've done no sanding or clean up to it. I just gave it a quick rub with some wire wool. Um, it looks simple. You know, it's, the setting isn't really distracting from the stone. Um, the small size of it suits the, you know, the thin metal of the ring band. It's never going to be as strong and secure as a basket setting. But you can't get much simpler in terms of how to set that. So it's pretty impressive. So, as I say, this month we've covered basket settings. Making them from scratch. Pre-made ones. Ooh, focus. We have done super simple claw settings with and without balls. Previous months we did bezel setting and cold connections. So I really would encourage you to have a go. And it's completely up to you, like I say, how in depth you go. You can buy a pre-made setting. You can even buy, look in here, I've got a very, very old Konocraft catalogue and I tried to tab page so let's say this is all well out of date but this just shows all the pre-made rings you can buy where all you need to do is pop the stones in and set them so don't let people tell you that you can't do that if this is how you want to work and how you want to try stuff go for it I've even taught you know one of my weekly courses one of my students unfortunately had to miss quite a few sessions because of work and she really wanted to do faceted stone setting didn't have time to learn from scratch so she bought pre-made settings and rings and set those um, it's just to show you the wealth of options that you have <laughs>